Hey everybody, Andrew here. If you've used High Level at all, then you know how important it is to have a dedicated domain set up for your emails so that way whenever you're sending out emails, they're sending from your specific domain, so it's all white labeled, rather than the default domain that is set up with High Level. So I know this is a little bit of a daunting task to figure out how to set up your own dedicated domain, what even are dedicated domains, and why it's important that you need to even use them. So I'm gonna be going over all of that in this video today. Now, dedicated domains are essentially the emails and domains that you are going to be sending emails from whenever you are using the High Level CRM. By default, High Level has their own email sending domain, which is going to look like messagesender.net or something like that. As you can see right here, here's an example of what an email could look like. For example, admin at mg.messagesender.net. That is an example of High Level's default dedicated domain that they use across the board. Now, this is great because every sub account is set up from the get go to be able to send out emails from this domain specifically rather than just a Gmail account. However, though, this is really just a temporary fix for whenever you were getting your accounts just started and you realistically should have a dedicated domain set up on any of your accounts that you're going to be sending emails from. Essentially, our goal here is to take this via mg.messagesender.net or the mailed by messagesender.net, take that from that to whatever our domain is for our company. So for an example, this is one company called scaledna.io and this is being sent from mg.scaledna.io because that's just the domain that I picked for this email. You can see that in the mailed by and the signed by in any emails that I'm going to be sending from this sub account because that email came from high level. Now, the first and most obvious benefit of doing this is that it's completely white label to you. You no longer have the tie of message sender to any of your emails. You have your own brand associated with it, which makes you look more professional and lets people know that you are the one that's really sending them emails and that they can trust the emails they're receiving from you. Not only will having a dedicated domain gain your customer's trust, but it will also gain the trust of email providers. Platforms like Gmail, Outlook, and iCloud all have a sending reputation, which is associated with every email that ever sends an email on their platform. Think of this kind of like a credit score associated with your email. Every email address has a different score, which unfortunately we can't really see, but we can do things to make sure that that score is as high as possible. And one of the things that helps with that is having a dedicated domain. Now, as you can imagine, since every domain associated with an email has this own sending reputation, what do you think happens whenever you're sending emails from the messagesender.net default high-level domain? Well, your sending reputation is going to be that of them, not your account specifically. Now, since this is the default domain across every single high-level account that has ever been created that hasn't switched over to a dedicated domain, that sending reputation from all of those accounts gets filtered down to you. So not only do you not really have any control over the sending reputation of that domain, you also have no idea what types of emails other people are sending, and you don't want your emails to be tracked by systems like Gmail, iCloud, or Outlook as emails that may be fishy if someone else using the platform unfortunately sends out emails using that domain that are getting flagged by those platforms. So having your own dedicated domain for sending out emails will allow you to keep your email separate from everybody else's as well as your sending reputation, and also it's gonna make you look a lot better to your customers. There's a couple other benefits, like it's going to be a little bit more secure since you're the only one using that dedicated domain for sending out emails, and it's also going to really increase your email deliverability rates. So all around, it's something you really have to do if you're gonna be sending out emails from high level. Okay, now that you kinda of understand how dedicated domains work, let's get right into how you can set up your own. So in your high level sub account, what you wanna do is go to settings, and then we're gonna to go to the email services tab. This is where we're gonna be able to create our own dedicated domains and mess with any of our email settings from here on out. So just remember, if we're messing with email settings, we are probably here. Now your default provider should be set up as lead connector, which is what it should be. If it's not, this video might not apply to you, but if it is, then we're gonna go ahead and move forward. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to dedicated domain and IP on the right-hand side. And this is where we will be able to see all of our dedicated domains. And as you can see, I already have two set up for myself. Now, if you're watching this video, you might not have one set up already. So let me show you exactly how you can do that. What you're gonna wanna do is click the plus button in the right-hand side that says add domain. And then we are going to create our new dedicated domain. Now it gives you an example of what you should enter. This example is lc mydomain.com, which is really just the format for how these domains are set up. There's a lot of helpful tips all over this screen, a couple of them talking about the new DNS records and what you have to do in order to get this set up with DNS, which I'll show you how to do in a second. You can also see on the right-hand side what high level would recommend in how you are creating your subdomain. They said we recommend using a subdomain with Mailgun, like mg.mydomain.com. Using this subdomain, you'll be able to send emails from the root domain, for example, you at mydomain.com. But if you're using a subdomain, then make sure you can configure those MX records for the subdomain for optimal delivery. This is essentially saying that if you have an email set up, let's say you bought one through Google Workspace or something like that, that is just you at yourdomain.com, then you wanna set up your sending domain as one that is under a subdomain, which is just adding a word or a couple letters before the domain. For example, you have you at lc.yourdomain.com. So just that little addition of those two letters is creating a subdomain, so that way you have one sending domain specifically for workflows and things that are coming out of high level, and one for your regular email that you already purchased. But of course, if you haven't purchased an email already and you just own the domain, 
you can do this the same way. It works totally fine. Now, the letters themselves that you use in your subdomain actually don't matter a lot. You can do something like lc.mydomain.com or you could set up something like mg.mydomain.com. Those are going to be the two most common ones. Another one that I've set up is mail.mydomain.com since it's still pretty short and it's a little bit more clear, but you can use anything you want like that. Now, for this example, I'm going to create a new dedicated domain under a new email that's never been created before. We're going to do mg.coachingdna.net, which is just one of the domains that I own. And then once we've done that, we're going to click add and verify. So after it loads for a second, you'll have the option to either do this process manually or click the continue button. Depending on where your domain is hosted, these might end up being the same thing. So we're going to click continue. Then it's going to go through a process to find out where your domain is actually hosted. And in this setting, we will have to do it manually because this domain is hosted on Squarespace, I believe. Now, I know messing with DNS records can seem daunting. It's really not that bad. So let me show you how this works. Now, before we do anything, we're going to go to our domain provider, which in my case is Squarespace. It's wherever you just bought your domain so we can edit our DNS records. Once we get there, you're going to have to navigate to the DNS settings section. This is going to be different for every different platform, but it should be pretty easy to find out where DNS is actually located in settings. And then you may see a couple of custom records. You may see nothing. It's going to depend on where you have your domain set up already. In my case, I only have this set up for websites. I have nothing for emails. And so this is what it looks like on my end. All we need to essentially do to set up the email domains is add each one of these records into this DNS area with the corresponding host and required value. Now that we copied and pasted these values, we're going to click verify records and I'll show you what happens next. So it just sent us to this screen where we can see all of our records and we can see that they have all been verified, except for this very last one, which is a text record, which we don't really need to worry about as it says this field is optional. So now that we're good to go, we can click verify domain one more time just to make sure everything is good. And then we can be sent back to this screen where we can see all of our dedicated domains. And this is the dedicated domain that we just created. Now, depending on the email that you have, the SSL is going to be a little bit finicky sometimes. Sometimes you need to verify the domain in order to fix the certificate. So if that's the case for you, as it is for me, then you can just click verify now, and then it'll have you go through this whole process. Great, and we just added in that new record and now our SSL has been issued. Now from here, you're just about done. There's only a couple other settings that you can mess with if you want to. The main one that you'll see is the default header. So this is essentially what the default header is whenever you send out your email, being the name of the sender and the email address itself. Obviously the dedicated domain that you see at the top is not a full email address. There's no at sign in it or anything. So if we want, we can click these three dots and then we can click set headers and this will allow us to enter whatever we want it to be. So if we want to enter our name to ensure that every time it sends an email, it says our name on it. And then we can put in our from email. So if we want to use our email associated with this account, then I can put my name with the email right there and click save. So now what that's going to do is every time it sends an email is going to default to that name and that email, which is great if that's what you want to do with it. You'll also see when you click these three dots, a couple of other settings, you can obviously verify the domain again, which this one's already been verified. So we're good to go. We can delete the name using this. We can assign an IP address, which is not really necessary for the actual dedicated domain right now. That's a little bit more advanced. We can also go to our domain settings themselves which is essentially going to allow us to turn on click tracking or open tracking. By default, we want to keep both of these on. This is going to keep our tracking pixels inside of our emails and it'll allow all of our workflows to function properly. And we can also look at our SMTP settings. This is where we can see the actual credentials for the email sending server, which is, as we can see right here is from mailgun.org. And we can also create authorized users under each email right now if we want to using these SMTP credentials, but we don't really need to get into that right now. We just want to get you set up enough so you can use your dedicated domain with your workflows and any emails you're sending from high level. Obviously, if you have multiple dedicated domains set up and we want to, for example, switch over to this one, we're just going to click the checkbox and then it'll switch over just like that. And lastly, we can go to the domain configuration tab, which will allow us to select what email, what domain is going to be used in different scenarios. So for example, we can set a workflow domain. We can set a one-on-one -on -one conversation domain, which is this is going to be in the conversations tab whenever we send out an email from there. We can set up an email campaign domain. This will do everything except for test campaigns a bulk email domain and a default dedicated domain. Right now, by default, the default dedicated domain is the only one that has one selected, which essentially means that all of these are going to be coming from the same email, which is totally fine. But if you would like to have a different email address for workflows, one-on-one -on -one conversations, campaigns, and bulk emails, then you can do that too. So for example, if I want to send workflows from this one that we just created, then we can do that. If I want to send one-on-one -on -one conversations from a different domain, then I can click this one. And as you can see, this one doesn't have a default header, so it's getting a little bit of a warning, which is fine right now, which is fine for demonstration purposes. And I think you get the gist for campaigns and bulk emails. Something else that we can do, which I can't personally think of a use case for, but the functionality is there, is actually set up multiple domains for one of these options. So if we have workflow domains and we want to set up the system so that way half the time it sends from this email and then the other half the time it sends to another one, we can select our main domain right here, which is where you'll see 100%. And if we click a second one, then that's going to drop to 50. And now 50% of the time it's going to send 
from one or the other. For most people, this isn't going to apply, but if you are sending a high volume of emails, then this could be helpful so that way you stay under sending limits for different email addresses. So if you're sending maybe a thousand a day, then it might be helpful to have two, three, or four of these emails all under workflows if you're sending all of them through workflows. So that way they can all be split and you won't go over any sending issues. You can also adjust these frequency settings by clicking the frequency settings on the right-hand side. You can adjust them just as long as you make them add up to 100%, then you'll be good to go. So that's essentially all you really need to know about setting up a dedicated domain. I hope you understand why it's helpful, why it's important. And if you're gonna be sending emails, it is absolutely crucial that you set up a dedicated domain for your sending emails. So that way your customers know it's you. So that way Gmail, Outlook, iCloud, all of the platforms know that you have a good reputation. And so you can be completely in control of making sure that your emails are being delivered to everybody that you send them to. I hope this was pretty straightforward and that you found it helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you.